Next week, NASA is beginning a new chapter in space exploration, as you well know. The Artemis One mission is launching Monday morning, and it's going to pave the way for humans to go to the moon and eventually Mars. And there's little of a local connection. Uh, that's right. I spoke with Stu McClung, a NASA engineer in charge of the crew module, to learn more, including what piece of Minnesota engineering will make Artemis possible. Artemis One is the first of our series of missions. Uh, this has taken humans back to the moon. Uh, so it's this is an uncrewed test flight. We'll launch uh, its 42-day mission. We will actually go to the moon, around the moon, and actually well beyond the moon, 30, 40,000 miles. And I like to think of it as a big final chest drive. Artemis is the first of an entirely new series of missions and kind of some new goals for NASA. Can you talk a little bit about that? Personally, it's a very exciting time, right? Uh, you know, NASA's doing all kinds of amazing things with James Webb, with Hubble, ISS still operating, right? The intent of Artemis is to get back into the lunar vicinity uh, and onto the lunar surface in a more sustainable manner and really start expanding those horizons, scientific exploration horizons, and, and creating a much more permanent presence uh, on the surface of the moon and doing it in a, a really unique manner. You've got uh, the, the big NASA that you see, plus a lot of international partners, other commercial partners, so it's a much different mix of uh, participants than, say, old Apollo was. This is really intended to be a much more uh, evolutionary and sustainable approach as opposed to, you know, it's a different time in the world, right? We had a different kind of overall drive. Let's get out there and demonstrate it. We'll do that again, but we're also going to do that and use that as a stepping stone for potentially for future deep, other deep space exploration. Yeah, I was going to say, is this uh, sort of a stopping point on a way to uh, farther exploration, like perhaps to Mars? Can well be, right? That's uh, that's downstream a ways, of course. Um, but the, it's a really good testing ground. Um, you know, when you're in low Earth orbit, for example, right? If you're in low Earth orbit and you need to get a crew home, you can get them home fairly quickly. When you get to the moon, really you're at least three days away if you need to get home quickly. And so you have to be much more autonomous. The crew has to be able to handle things uh, independently. Um, when you start talking about Mars missions, right, that becomes even, even greater. And so it, if you think about building blocks, using this to test what it's like working on the surface for an extended, extended period of time, uh, you know, you'll learn things, you know, like generally we think we know everything coming into the mission. Uh, but space is a very unforgiving environment. And, you know, if you get something wrong or you haven't learned it quite well enough, it'll usually point that out to you. I think that we have now all been well trained enough, especially after things like Apollo 13, where you realize that the real growth happens when you bump into something you don't understand or hadn't anticipated. And that sort of brings me to my next question. There, there are obviously a lot of problems in the world right now. There's a lot of monetary problems in the United States. And there are people who always question, well, why are we spending this much money on this NASA mission or this NASA uh, objective? If one of those people asking that was your neighbor, what would you tell them? At the end of the day, great countries explore. And the return on the dollar for what we're doing uh, and for the exploration and the technical benefits we get, uh, and frankly, the inspiration that, it, uh, that comes from it, is, is well worth the return. Um, I work in the office that deals with that. I can tell you that we, we, we manage those dollars as, uh, as closely as we can. It is, it is not... Uh, you're not playing free and loose with your tax dollars. I always think it's it's interesting and important to point out to uh, the world and the community that you know there's a lot of people that have a piece and a part of that. And so thanks to that part of our team. One last shout out to the the team up uh, at RTI Remley. They're up in Big Lake. Um, I actually was up there for a design review in my past. They make the structural elements of the three service module flanges or service module fairings. They they're one of our. They're in our supply chain. So when the three fairings separate early in the mission, the team up at Big Lake was the team that manufactured and provided those fairings, uh, or those the flanges for those fairings to us.
So Big Lake is going to the moon this time and the next uh, Artemis missions that follow. Uh, this launch is scheduled for Monday morning at 7.33 Central Time. Uh, of course, it could be scrubbed if their weather conditions aren't right, but yeah. we'll, uh, we'll let you know. Okay, well, we've got a link on WCCO.com so you can watch it live. And I love that Big Lake is big time here. Uh, I, want be, I didn't know that until he mentioned it. It's pretty cool to, to know how many communities around the country are contributing to the project. And, of course, NASA is employing those people, too, so that's good news.